Welcome back to my Advent of Code solution series. So today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 2. So here we have a rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, so as usual with the early ones, you most of the time can skip to approximately where the first sample input is and then look a bit back to see if there's anything important. In this case, it seems like there is some important stuff, specifically these bold pieces. So you have an encrypted strategy guide, which is your input, which they say will help you win at rock, paper, scissors. And so in case you don't know how it works, uh, two players simultaneously play one of rock, paper, or scissors. Uh, scissors beats paper, which beats rock, which beats scissors. And if two people play the same thing, they tie. So the first column is what your opponent plays, A for rock, B for paper, and C for scissors. And the second column is you believe X for rock, Y for paper, and Z for scissors, which would make sense. And since winning each time is too suspicious, the responses have been carefully chosen. So, in this case, your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. So what is your score for each round? It is the score of the shape you selected, which is 1 for rock, 2 for paper, and 3 for scissors, plus the score of the outcome of the round. 0 if you lost, 3 if it was a draw, and 6 if you won. And so you calculate the score that you would get if you were to follow the strategy guide. So let's look at this test case. So in the first round, they play rock and you play paper, which means you win. And paper has a score of 2, so you get a total of 8 points. In the second round, they play paper and you play rock, which makes you lose, and you get a score of 1 because rock scores 1. And finally, both of you play scissors, so you get a score of 6, 3 for playing scissors, and 3 for the draw. And so this would give you a total of 15 points. So let's grab our puzzle input first. And let's start coding. So we want to calculate a total score. So our code should look something like this. And then in the middle, we will go through each line. So for a line in, by the way, open zero is a shortcut to open standard input. It's very helpful for advent of code. So this will give you all of the lines. And in this case, um, we can do x, y equals line dot split, where x will be the left column and y will be the right column. So working with strings for stuff like this isn't really nice. So the easiest way to convert them into numbers is to take the code point, which you can use with the built-in ORD, and then just subtract. So x equals ORD x minus 65, 65 being um, the code point for capital A and then y equals ord of y minus ord of capital Y. Um, you could figure out what the number for this is. Uh, I just don't know it off the top of my head, so this is easier. Um, you could also do it for this part. It's just that I know that a is 65. So now the first thing we need to do is determine if we won or lost. So how do we determine that? Well, if we, if we play the same shape, then that means there's a tie. So t plus equals 3. If we lose, we don't gain any points for this, so we actually only need to check if we win. Um, also, checking if we lose would just be an if anyway. So with this, you could list out the three options. The easiest way to do it is to just subtract and then modulo. So if we subtract x from y, so if y minus x, um, since they're listed in order such that the next one beats the current one, this should be equal to 1. It could also be equal to negative 2, though. If the opponent plays scissors and we play rock, we'd get a difference of negative 2. So we take this mod 3, which gives us 1 if we win. So we get that. And then if we win, t plus equals 6. And finally, we just need to add the score for what we played. So since y is either 0, 1, or 2, representing rock, paper, or scissors, and we want to get a score of 1, 2, or 3, depending on what we played, then t plus equals y plus 1. And the reason I subtracted ord of y and not ord of uh, whatever comes before y here is because it's not quite as nice when working with modular arithmetic always. In this case, it actually would not make a difference, but in the next part, I believe, it will actually end up mattering. Um, of course, there's no way to know this during the contest, but whenever you're doing stuff with modular arithmetic, you generally want to start at 0. 
And it's just a plus one here anyway. It doesn't lose as much time. So let's run it against the test input. Um, ooh, right, I forgot to read the input. We get our answer of 12. Is it not supposed to be 15? Ah, right, because this should be x here. Yeah, so that gives us the correct input, 14,163 for this. Moving on to part two. The elf returns and comes back over to you. The second column actually tells you how the round needs to end, not what you need to play. x means you lose, y means you draw, and z means you win. And so the score is calculated the same, but now instead of having what you play, you have the result of the round. So in this case, Oh yeah, the thing I mentioned earlier actually doesn't matter in this part. So in this case, I found the easiest way was to just try all possibilities for x. So if it's a loss, then we know that we gain zero points for the uh, result, so we just need to add what we play. So again, going back to modular arithmetic, um, since we need to lose, we need to be one before what the opponent plays. So if they play paper, which is one, we need to play rock, which is zero. So we subtract one. And then we again need to mod three because otherwise we'd get negative one for uh, scissors. And then again, we need to add one because the scores go one, two, three instead of zero, one, two. If we draw, then we gain three points for the result and we play the same thing as the Opponent. So in this case, we don't need to mod 3. It actually would not make a difference. Um, and then we add 1 again for the offset. And finally, if we want to win, then it's basically the same thing. We add 6 this time for the win, and then we do x plus 1 mod 3, and then we add 1 for the offset again. And so if we run our test, we get 12 this time, and we should get 12091 from the real input. So that's all for today. Um, I hope you learned something and enjoyed. Check back tomorrow for day three.